Hi everybody. Today we're going to begin our uh, unit on human genetics. And the first lesson of human genetics is a lesson on sex-linked inheritance. <clears throat> so, what determines if you're male or female is what type of sex chromosomes you have. Right? Here we have pictures of the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. If you're a female, you're going to have two copies of this larger X chromosome right here. However, if you're a male, you're going to have one of these large X chromosomes and one of these smaller Y chromosomes over here. Right. So, we see that the X chromosome is, is definitely much larger in terms of size, but it also contains okay, a lot more uh, genes and a lot more traits and then uh, the Y chromosome that we see over here. So hopefully you guys remember how to make Punnett squares. It's something that we learned about earlier on uh, in the school year. So here we see a Punnett square set it up and the question we want to answer is what is the probability of producing either a male offspring or a female offspring? Right. Remember that females even though they have two X chromosomes, they can only pass on one of the two X chromosomes, right? When females pass on their X chromosomes, right, they create egg cells to pass these chromosomes on to the next generation, which means that every single egg cell that females create is going to have exactly one X chromosome. Now, when it comes to males, males have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome, which means that when males create sperm cells, Right. Half of the male sperm cells are going to contain this X chromosome, and half of the sperm cells are going to contain a Y chromosome. So when you fill out this Punnett square, we see that we have uh, two <coughs> female offsprings at the top here. So we have a two in a four chance of having the genotype XX, which is female. And then on the bottom, we have a two, and a four, two out of four chance of having the genotype XY, which is a male offspring. So it's always a 50% 50, 50 chance of whether or not you get a male or a female child. So let's talk about some sex-linked genes. When we talk about sex-linked genes, we're talking about genes that are located on one of the sex chromosomes, either the X chromosome or the Y chromosome. But remember, the X chromosome is much larger and contains much more genes. So... Most sex-linked genes are found on the X chromosome. Okay? The few that are found on the Y chromosome are passed directly from father to son. So remember that females have no copies of this Y chromosome, and therefore they have no chance of getting any of the traits that are found on this Y chromosome. Okay? Males only have one X chromosome, which means that all of these traits that show up on the X chromosome, they get expressed, they get shown up in the male, regardless of whether or not they're dominant or recessive. And the problem with that is that this X chromosome contains a lot of genetic disorders that are recessive. And because males only need one copy of these genetic disorders, they're much more likely to get them. Females, since they need two copies of a recessive genetic disorder for it to show up, right, they're less likely to get some of these disorders. So we're talking about colorblindness. Okay? A disorder called hemophilia is right next to colorblindness on the chromosome. Hemophilia is a bleeding disorder where your blood doesn't clot. And then up here, we have muscular dystrophy, which basically like, like your muscles kind of like lock up and break down over time and stop working. So let's take a look at colorblindness as an example here. Okay. Remember the genes are found on the X chromosome. So it's much more likely that males are going to be colorblind because of this, right? One in 12 males have this recessive trait for colorblindness, right? But because females need two copies of this gene in order to be colorblind, it's only about one out of 200 females that are colorblind, right? So much more common for males. So here we have a question, right? It says, draw a point square to show the probability that a heterozygous normal vision female and a normal vision male will have a colorblind child. 
right? So the first thing we got to do is put the sex chromosomes in the Punnett square. Now, right? remember that female is going to be XX, right? Now, next to the X's, we're going to put a big B and a little B, all right? The big B is going to be the symbol I chose for normal vision, all right? The little B means that you're colorblind. All right, so here we have a heterozygous, big B, little B, normal vision female. All right, so she's a carrier. She's not colorblind. She can see fine. However, the male has normal vision. All right, so we're going to put his sex chromosomes on their side here. He was XY, but since he was normal vision, we're going to put a big B next to his X. All right, and then we can go ahead and fill in that Punnett square. All right, so this first box is a completely normal vision female. This box over here is going to be a female that is normal vision, but a carrier for colorblindness. And then at the bottom here, we have a son who's normal vision, just like the father was. However, the last son is X little b y, right? So there's a one in four chance of them producing a colorblind child, right? And it's only true if it's a male child. If they know they're having a daughter, it's impossible for their daughters to be colorblind. Right? If we're having a son, there's a 50% chance a son would be colorblind. But overall, it's a one in four chance they produce a colorblind child, right? So it's not like a life-changing event. If you're colorblind, when you look at this image over here, you'll probably see something that's more like this image right here. All right. Um, all right, guys, that's it for today's lesson. Thank you.